Hey guys, Alex here from Advanced Procrastinators, and this video right here, not gonna lie, this is a redo because last time it was like bad. Uh, I got better mic, we got better uh, editing skills now, so we're gonna do this real quick. A car is stopped at a traffic light. The light turns green at a time t equals zero. The car starts moving and travels with a constant acceleration. At that instant, a truck traveling at constant speed vt is alongside the car, with the front of each vehicle at position x equals zero as shown above. The truck passes the car, but the car later catches up to the truck in front of the house, such that at time td, the front of each vehicle is at position xd. Okay, cool. On the axis below, sketch the label graphs with the velocity of the car and the velocity of the truck as a function of time. Indicate any important velocities or times. So for the truck, Essentially, it's at traveling at a constant speed, right? So you can draw any straight horizontal line, like so, and label it v t. This would be the truck. So what about the car? Oh, that was a terrible K. What the frick? What about the car? Well, the car, we know it starts at an initial velocity of zero, right? Because it's at rest. And it's accelerating up. So you may want to draw any line that has an upward slope, but they're both traveling the same distance, right? Which means, let me change a color here. Change my size, which means the area taken by the car, this area, this triangle, has to equal the area taken by the truck because D equals VT, right? So now we have that on here. I'm going to change back to red, keep things consistent. This here is the car, and here would be 2vt, right? And that makes life much easier for the next questions too. Now, we also got to indicate any important velocities or times, right? Well, here, the car and the truck, actually, if I was to draw it properly, they're not stopping here, they, they keep going. They keep going beyond the graph, right? But for our question, we had a time of TD, and that is when we have the same distance, the same area. So here would be TD. All right, awesome. Part B, two students are discussing how the speed of the car compares to speed of the truck when both vehicles are in front of the house. Student 1 says the distance traveled by the car and the truck is the same, and the time is the same, so they must have the same speed. Student 2 says, I don't see how that can be. The car catches up to the truck, so the car has to be going faster. Well, we use a bit of logic here. Well, first, we know for sure that the distance traveled by the car and the truck is the same, and we know that time is the same. Speed, however, cannot be the same because we see here at TD, the car and the truck, the car has double the speed of the truck. And student 2 says, I don't see how that can be. The car catches up to the truck, so the car has to be going faster. This is correct. So now we have to support our answers in terms of relevant features of our graph. And so what we're going to do here. Distance traveled by the car and the truck is the same and time is the same. So, distance traveled. I still can't type. Like, after all these videos, I still can't type. It's traveled equals areas bound by the, is it bound by the lines? But on most AP questions, they take curves, even though it's a straight line. Areas bound by the curves. And then you would talk about how distance is the same. 
and then how we're using TD as a reference time where D is the same. And then you say for student two, the reasoning is correct that the car is to be going faster because we see that at TD, where distance is the same, the car is traveling at twice the speed of the truck. All right, so now we have to say, derive an, uh, derive an expression for the acceleration of the car. Express your answers in terms of D and VT. Well, we know that here at D, uh, the car is traveling at 2VT and the car is traveling at VT. So, Actually, you know what? Let me clear the board here. Let's take a look. So we know that the final speed of the car is twice the speed of the truck, and we're only deriving exp an expression for the acceleration of the car, right? So, VC equals, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say VF. So the final velocity of the car equals 2VT. because this is in terms of d, right? So we're going with our whole graph thing. And we know that the initial velocity of the car equals zero because the car starts from rest. And so we're solving for acceleration and that we should use uh, vf squared equals vi squared plus two AD, that's one of our kinematics equations, right? And so we'll sub in our values right here. So VF is 2VT, right? 2VT squared equals, now VI is zero, right? So 2AD. Isolate for A, A equals, 2vt squared over d, right? Because here, this turns into a 4, we're squaring it. So I should have actually put brackets here. There we go. Awesome. And now we have to determine the time at which the speed of the car is equal to the speed VT of the truck. Express your answers in terms of TD. Oh, wait, hold on first. Make sure, see how I have the capital D here? They, have, they, wanted, to us, they wanted us to express our answers in terms of T and VT, D and VT. God, I cannot talk. So pay attention because I used lowercase variables during my work, but I still answered using the terms that they wanted to. Okay, so essentially, right here, determine the time at which the speed of the car is equal to the speed VT of the truck. So we know from our graph up here, actually, let's quickly redraw our graph. We had this, and then this, this was TD, this was our reference line for TD, which means here we see that they have the same velocity at half the time. So essentially, you could say, refer back to the graph, the lines intersect at T at one half TD. This means 
that BC, which is the speed of the car, equals VT at half of time TD. This, the graph also counts as your work, right? If you wanted to do it algebraically, though, well, then we would go like this. Okay, I'll have to clear the space. So if we're going to do it algebraically, well, first we know two really basic formulas. First, we know that velocity equals distance over time, and we know that acceleration equals velocity over time, right? We know what our acceleration is. Acceleration equals, now we had bt before. Now we can just talk in terms of v. 2v squared over d. And so, if we set that in, first of all, we're going to take our acceleration formula, we're going to isolate for t. So t equals v over, now a, right, 2v squared over d. So if we rearrange that, t should equal vd over, sorry, not vd, this is d over 2v, right there. And if we look at this first one above, we know that t equals d over v. Now this t is different. This t here is actually, I should make it as td from above. This was, this was our reference time. So you take a look at this and we're, you're like, oh, whoa, isn't d over v td? So yeah, so essentially your time now, t equals td divided by 2. And that's how you do it algebraically. That was really easy, right? You can also double check and look back at your graph, right? So you can have your graph and your algebraic, algebraic solution. So that's how you solve this one. Justify your answer. Well, then again, you can refer back in terms of our uh, graph, or you can refer to it in terms of acceleration. And that's how we would uh, solve this question here. So again, if there's any questions, problems, concerns, Here's my contact information. You can drop a comment in the comment box below. I really want to thank the person that dropped the comment and pointed out some of the issues I had in the first video. So thank you very much. Feedback is always really important. And I'll see you guys next time.